The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Quality Foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. Here's a salad dressing that's different, delightfully different from any other dressing you've ever tasted. Not too sharp, not too bland. Miracle Whip has a peppy goodness that millions say is just exactly right. Enjoy Miracle Whip tomorrow. Even the simplest salad will bring you compliments when it's made with Miracle Whip. <laughs> see what's doing at the great Gildersleeve's house. Late last night, Marjorie and Bronco came home from their honeymoon to again complete the little family circle. Well, I'm glad they're home. I hope they like the little apartment upstairs. They ought to, Mr. Gildersleeve. You sure fixed it up nice for them. Yeah, but it cramps Elmer's style. You're a turtle, Leroy? Yeah. He doesn't have the run of the upstairs like he used to. I think it's got him worried. Uh, a turtle with claustrophobia. <laughs> Come on, Leroy. Let's go work in the yard for a little while, huh? Are you going to the office, Miss Kilsey? Well, Bertie, I thought I'd wait around till Marjorie and Bronco came down. I didn't get a chance to talk to them much last night. No, sir. Who did? Hmm? All I can say is, Marjorie, darling, Bronco, darling, Marjorie, darling, Bronco, darling. They're worse than before they were married. <laughs> now, Leroy? I thought that mushy stuff stopped after the honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> If I know them, too, they'll be on a honeymoon for years and years. Yeah, I hope so. Come along, Leroy. What are we going to do, Unc? Well, let's see now. We might burn the rubbish for Bertie. Oh, boy, look at the pile. Yeah, pretty big, all right. Let me light it, Unc. I'll show you how to start a fire by rubbing two sticks together. Oh? Well, go ahead, my boy. Little boy scout. <laughs> Leroy, you're rubbing two matches together. Well, they're sticks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, brother, a junior Milton Burrow. There she goes. Yeah, pretty damp. It's going to smoke a lot. The breeze will keep it going. Hey, look, we're laying down a smoke screen. Uh-oh, it's blowing right across the street to Bullard's house. And the bedroom windows are open. Wonder if Bullard's up. He will be. Yeah. Hey, uh, how about tossing this old rubber tire on the fire? No, Leroy. Why not? We can't help if the breeze blows the smoke over there. That's Mother Nature at work. Yeah. Well, maybe this wasn't a good idea, Leroy. Bullard will think I'm doing it on purpose. So what? He doesn't like you and you don't like him. Now, Leroy, it isn't that we don't like each other. We just don't get along. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me if he comes over here and tries to start something. Gildersleeve! Zeke, here he comes. Let's run, Unc. No, Leroy, we'll stand our ground. It's ours. Gildersleeve, what are you up to now? Oh, Mr. Bullard, good morning. Nice morning, isn't it? I don't know. I can't see it for the smoke. <laughs> <laughs> smoke, huh? Oh, oh, it is a little smoky, isn't it? <laughs> Gildersleeve, haven't you any consideration for other people? Oh, yes. It was out of consideration for you, Mr. Buller, that we didn't burn this rubber tire. Well, thank heaven for that. Gildersleeve, how in the lottery of life did I draw you for a neighbor? Well, let's see. I came here tonight. No, see here, Bullard. I might ask you the very same thing. You just waited until the wind was right to burn rubber. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. You keep out of this, Leroy. <laughs> no, I didn't. Well, whether you did it on purpose or not, it was a stupid thing to do. Oh, careful who whom you call stupid. I'm a public official. I'm the water commissioner. Gildersleeve, if you fool with me, I'll buy the water department and cut off your water. Oh, <laughs> An incomplete. That did it. Leroy burned the tire. Won't you have some breakfast with us, Unky? No, thanks, Marjorie. Leroy and I have eaten. I can eat again. Leroy, <laughs> let's leave something for Marjorie and Bronco. Uh, Leroy's like me. He can always eat. Mm -hmm. uh, pass the toast, Marge, darling. Here, 
darling. You see, out there, still at it. <laughs> uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, what was all the noise out in the backyard? Noise? Uncle was just exchanging pleasantries with a neighbor. Uh, yes. <laughs> Well, what are you lovebirds going to do today? Oh, I have a million things to do. Mm -hmm. Unpack, shampoo my hair, sew on some buttons for Bronco. Good. Yeah, I'm going to work right after breakfast. Uh, pass the jam, Marge, darling. Of course, dear. Oh, brother. <laughs> well, uh, you going over to your father's little bookstore and start right in, Bronco? No, sir, I'm not depending on my father. Uh, will you pass the bacon again, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, bacon. Uh, thanks. Remember what I've always said, my boy. I can find a place for you in our water department. Oh, thanks, Mr. Gildersleeve, but I'm not sponging off you. <laughs> will you pass the eggs again, please? <laughs> Heavy eater. <clears throat> well, uh, what do you plan to do, Bronco? Anything in particular? Tell him your plan, darling. Yeah, what is your plan, darling? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Bronco. Hey, Bronco! and dig potatoes. Potatoes? Sure, the government pays good money for them. Uh, Leroy? Okay. <coughs> well, I've got big plans, Mr. Gildersleeve, because I have the most wonderful wife in the world to support. Haven't I, Marge, honey? Oh, Bronco. <laughs> Isn't he wonderful, Uncle? Oh, yes, but how are you wonderful people going to live? Mr. Gildersleeve, I have a briefcase. <laughs> You have? And in it, there's a real estate license. Anki, he's going to sell real estate. Real estate, eh? Well, I admire your spunk, Bronco, but uh, not wanting to depend on me or your father. Well, spunk is what I've got plenty of. Spunk and drive. And ability. And ability. <laughs> but, Bronco, don't you think real estate is a little uh, crowded? Mr. Gildersleeve, the way I see it, the whole world is waiting to be sold. Oh? There's always room at the top. What are you going to sell, the North Pole? <laughs> Please, Leroy, don't snipe at a young man starting his career. <laughs> oh, that's all right, Mr. Gildersleeve. Nothing can stop me. <laughs> I'm starting out to ring doorbells right after breakfast. Uh, more bacon, Marge? Oh, there isn't any more, darling. Oh, well, I'm starting right now. <laughs> Goodbye, Marge, darling. Goodbye. Be sure to wear your coat. It's chilly out. That boy doesn't need a coat. He's a ball of fire. <laughs> Yes? Oh, good morning, Mr. Bullard. I'm Bronco Thompson, Mr. Gildersleeve's son-in-law. Oh, yes, yes, I know. You seem nervous, lad. Well, you're my first customer. I am? Mr. Bullard, I'm in the real estate business. Can I list your house for sale? Well, young man, this house is not for sale. Oh, well, I thought I'd ask you first. I'm starting at the bottom, you know. <laughs> uh, yes. Well, a good day, Mr. Bullard. I'll try some of the other neighbors. A good idea. Oh, oh, uh, Thompson. Oh, yes, sir? I just had a thought. Has Gildersleeve by any chance listed his house for sale? No, sir. I live there. Well, I don't mind you, but I... I mean, um... <laughs> Thompson, I'll give you a listing of mine if you'll promise to get a listing on Gildersleeve's house. Fair enough? Well, yes, sir. Very good. Come into my study, young man. <laughs> well, let's get the water department rolling, Bessie. I'm a little late this morning. My, you look nice, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hmm? What a pretty red flower you're wearing. Oh, that's a buddy poppy, Bessie. Everybody ought to wear one this week. Now, let's get started with the mail. Yes, sir. How are the newlyweds, Mr. Gildersleeve? Oh, fine, fine. But let's get down to work till the honeymoon's over. Yes, sir. Are they happy? Why, naturally, Bessie. But let's get on the ball. Oh, I'm so happy they're happy. Bessie, please. This isn't the happiness hour. This is drudgery. <laughs> Did you check the water report? No, sir, you did. Oh. Well, somebody has to be efficient around here. I will say the work on my desk isn't piled as high as it used to be. No, sir. I took the big pile and made it into three little piles. 
<laughs> uh, seems I've got a lot of work to do. Uh, Bessie, please close the door. I don't want to be disturbed. Yes, sir. Just the little pile. <laughs> Let's see. I think I'll work from left to right. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. What is it now, Bessie? Oh, there's a young man to see you. He says he's selling real estate. Bessie, I don't want any salesmen in my hair. Well, this one will be in your hair quite a while. He's your son-in-law. <laughs> uh, uh, Bronco, eh? Well, show him in. Hi, am in, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, so I see. Well, how's business, Bronco? Oh, great. Just dandy. And I want to talk to you about something. How does it feel to be a newlywed, Mr. Thompson? What? Oh, fine. All right, Bessie. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve. I hear you're so happy. Yeah. Mr. Gildersleeve. And I'm so happy you're happy. Bessie, will you please close that door from the other side? Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, what a secretary. Now, Bronco, you wanted my advice about something? No, sir. I want to list your house for sale. Well, at my house? I have a listing blank here, Mr. Gildersleeve. And if you'll just fill in a few details and sign on the dotted line, please. Wait a minute, Bronco. I don't want to sell my house. And put the top back on your fountain pen. Well, I've learned an important thing about the real estate business already. You can't sell real estate without listings. Well, that's logical and probably true, but why don't we start with somebody outside the family? No, I have. I listed Mr. Bullard's house this morning. Mr. Bullard gave you a listing on his house? Yes, sir. He said he liked to help a young man get started. Mm, that Bullard, trying to show me up before my old son-in-law. Let me see his listing, Bronco. Uh, there it is, in black and white. <laughs> his house isn't worth that much. He marked up the price. He knows it won't sell. Wasn't it nice of Mr. Bullard to give me the listing? Well, Bronco, he's no nicer than I am. Where's that dotted line? Well, hello, PV. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gillespie. <laughs> What can I do for you? Well, I thought I'd drop in and have lunch with you. On the house? Uh, well, no, Peavy. Have I ever asked you for a free lunch? We're good friends. Well, good friends are the kinds that eat a lot of free lunch. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Let me see your menu, Peavy. Very well. I recommend a cold salami sandwich. Well, I don't know. I think I like this roast beef. Well, if you're hungry, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'd take this salami. Why? Well, I don't have any roast beef. <laughs> All right, Peavy. Give me a ham sandwich. I'd still take the salami. No ham, eh, Peavy? <laughs> <laughs> Peavy, it's a little chilly. Don't you have something hot? Well, I can heat the salami. <laughs> I'll take it cold. Very well. I hear Marjorie brought her new husband back home last night. Yeah, they've settled down to married life, Peavy. Bronco's gone into the real estate business. Yes, I know. Here's your salami, Mr. Gildersleeve. Thanks. Peavy, don't tell me Bronco was drumming up business in here. Well, he did want me to list the pharmacy for sale. Yeah, that's Bronco, all right. Fast worker. I told him I'd have to talk it over with Mrs. Peavy. Well, Peavy, you didn't have to do that. Why didn't you just tell him no? Well, talking it over with Mrs. Peavy is telling him no. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Well, I don't want to sell my house either, but I gave him a listing on it. You don't say. Yeah, just to encourage the boy. Of course, I put the price up kind of high. He'll never sell it. But if he has a listing from me, it might help him get other business. Yes, it might. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Gillersleeve. Bronco. Yeah, I've been looking all over for you. I've sold your house. <laughs> sold my house? My, my. Yes, sir. Here's a cashier's check for the down payment. But, Bronco, you can't sell my house right out from under me. Can he, Peavy? No, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> We'll return to the great Gildersleeve very shortly. Many a famous cook will tell you that she made her reputation by the simple trick of serving really wonderful salads. Yes, and you can do it too. Very easily, in fact, if you'll remember to do these three things when you make that salad. First, make that salad in advance so it can be thoroughly chilled. Second, be sure your salad greens are drained dry and really crisp. And third, and probably most important of all, be very particular about the dressing you use. For real salad success, serve Miracle Whip. 
Miracle Whip is the salad dressing millions prefer. Actually, it's the most popular salad dressing ever created. And once you taste it, you'll know why. Miracle Whip has a delightfully different flavor. A delicate, zesty goodness most folks agree is just exactly right. Miracle Whip, you know, is a different kind of salad dressing. It's made from a secret craft recipe to give you the very best qualities of old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine mayonnaise. And Miracle Whip is blended with a special craft beater to give you a super smooth texture. Surprise your family tomorrow with an extra good salad and to be really sure they'll like it. Remember to use plenty of America's favorite salad dressing, the one and only Miracle Whip. Well, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. To encourage his new son-in-law in the real estate business... The great man listed his house for sale. He didn't think it would move at such a fancy price, but was he ever surprised? I listed it in good faith, Margie, but I had no idea he'd sell it. Oh, isn't Bronco a wonderful salesman, Unky? Well, he's a salesman. He won't even tell me who's bought the place. The buyer wants to remain anonymous. Besides, what do you care? You're getting twice what the house is worth. And think of the big commission Bronco's making. Well, I'm glad for that, but... Hey, Unc! What is it, Leroy? How much money do I get for my treehouse out of this deal? Well, that wasn't included in the deal, Leroy. Besides, we may have to live in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Unky, for the money Bronco's getting you, we can get an even larger house. Yeah, how about a private room and bath for my pet turtle? Leroy, this is a serious matter. And I'd back out of the deal if it was anybody else but Bronco. Yeah, and get sued. Hmm. Well, I guess the buyer could take action. Miss Gilsey. Yes, Bertie? When are we going to start looking at houses? Well, I don't know, Bertie. Let's not rush this thing. No, sir. Well, when we do, let's find a kitchen that's all automatic. All automatic? Yes, sir. The only thing automatic about the kitchen we got is Bertie. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Gilsey, when are we going to move? Well, I don't know, Bertie. I don't even know who Bronco sold the house to. <laughs> That Mr. Bronco, what a salesman. Uh, he sells so fast you don't even know who bought. Yeah, all right, Bertie. He's a natural bond salesman. Now, Bertie? Yes, yeah, he comes back from his honeymoon and starts selling. That's a natural bond salesman. I know, Bertie. Mr. Gilsey, do you know what your new son-in-law is? Yes, Bertie. That's right, he's a natural bond salesman. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I'm a natural-born sap. <laughs> How did I get into this? How do I get out of it? Hey, Uncle, where are you going? I don't know, my boy. Right now, I'm going around in circles. Looking for another house? No. Trying to figure out how to keep the one we've got. We don't want to sell that place. That's our home. Yeah, I guess it'd be pretty tough living in another house. Certainly it would. How could we get in when you forgot the key? We'd have to punch new holes in the screens. <laughs> Leroy, there's only one hole. It's in the service porch. Gosh, I might have to go to a new school where the teachers wouldn't take pity on me. Mm -hmm. I'll get worse grades than I do now. That's highly probable, Leroy. And what if Elmer doesn't like the new house? He may keep coming back like a cat. Ugh, a homing turtle. <laughs> Might take a month to make the trip. Yeah, well, don't worry about it, Leroy. We're not going to move, I hope. I could just find out who bought the place. Maybe you need a lawyer, Unc. Why don't you see Judge Hooker? Leroy, the judge doesn't know anything about real estate. Sure he does. He was standing in front of Peavy's drugstore this morning talking to Mr. Bullard about real estate. Mr. Bullard? Sure. I was sitting by the newsstand reading the comic books, and I heard Judge Hooker say... Real estate. Say, Hooker is Bullard's attorney. And if Bullard were... By George, I'm going over to Hooker's. What's the matter, Uncle? I smell a mouse, my boy, and there's an old cat saying, when you smell a mouse, head for the mouse hole. <laughs> uh, got a sneaking hunch the judge knows something about this deal. I'm sure he does. Confound. 
on it, I'll get the truth out of him if I have to beat the old goat with his own ass of to bag. <laughs> there he is going into his house. Judge! Horace! The old rascal sees me trying to get into the house. Now I know something's up. Horace! You come here! Ooh, look at him run. Horace! One more grab and I've got him. Yeah, Jake. Let go of my coat, Jake. Not by the hair of your chinny chin chin, you old goat. I want to talk to you, Horace. Not now, Gildy. I'm very busy and it's time for my Kalak water. Well, your Kalak water can wait. I want you to tell me the truth and nothing but the truth. But, Gildy. I listed my house for sale with Bronco only as a gesture to encourage the boy, and somebody pulled a sneaky trick on me and bought it. Do you know anything about it, Judge? That's a leading question. Mm. Judge, were you or were you not talking to Rumpson Bullard in front of Peavy's drugstore this morning? Let me see. Peavy's drugstore. Answer yes or no, Judge. Well, I bought a package of soda mints and Peavy gave me a glass of water. Let's leave your liver out of this. <laughs> what about Bullard? Oh, he's fine. <laughs> now, look here, Judge. A cashier's check. A deposit on my house. Now, who purchased this check? I can't tell you, Gildy. I don't have my glasses. The name is not. Have you ever seen this check before? Me? Oh, my goodness. Look, Horace, you're supposed to be an old friend of mine. Do you want to see me lose my house? Do you want to see it sold right out from under my little family? No, Gildy. Besides, but... you're my attorney. I know, Gildy, but I'm Rumson Bullard's attorney, too. And he pays me. Oh, so it is Bullard who's buying my house. I didn't say that, Gildy. It isn't ethical for an attorney to talk about his client's affairs. But it is Bullard. I didn't say it was, and I didn't say it wasn't. Well, you didn't say it wasn't? Well, I didn't say it was. Well, was it or wasn't it? It was. I mean, it wasn't. Well, you said it, Judge. It was. Now, Gildy. I did it. I set a trap, trap for a mouse and caught an old goat. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Gildersleeve. Well, Mr. Bullard. I must remember to have that doorbell changed. I don't care for it. What's this? Oh, I forgot to mention, Gildersleeve, I bought your house. You did? Well, Bullard, how could have you have done such a thing? I've been waiting for an opportunity to remove you from the neighborhood, Gildersleeve. You and your burning tires. How happy I'm going to be when you're gone. But where will I go? How about Canada? <laughs> Now, oh, Bullard, you wouldn't take advantage of an old neighbor, an old friend. An old neighbor? No. An old friend? No. <laughs> you, Gildersleeve, yes. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to come in and look over the house. Well, I can't stop you, Bullard. It's your house. How true, how true. Now, uh, uh, let's see. What room is this, Gildersleeve? Now, you know the rooms. You've been in this house before. I know, but I'd like to hear you tell me about it. Oh. Please, old neighbor, have mercy on me. I, I'm in an awful pickle. Well, I understand this is National Pickle Week. <laughs> Tell me about the rooms, Gildersleeve. You're a hard man, Bullard. Thank you. Proceed, Gildersleeve. Well, this is the living room. Imagine. Mm. You... What was that, Gildersleeve? Uh, nothing. My asthma. <laughs> I assume there are other rooms in the house? Oh, yes. We, we have a kitchen. Well, what a pleasant surprise. <laughs> From the fumes which are constantly drifting across the street, I thought you did all your cooking over the incinerator. <laughs> uh, that, I presume, is the dining room? Yes, that's our dining room. You eat in there? Yes. Standing up? <laughs> it's quite large when you're in it. I doubt if it would seem large when you're in it. <laughs> Bullard, have a heart. Give me a chance. Call off the deal. Nothing doing. I've waited years for this. On the day you move, I'm going to sit across the street on my veranda and cheer each passing piece of furniture. It will be a day of song and festivity. I shall adorn my cornices with bunting. <laughs> All right, Bullard, I'm licked. But how did you do it? It was quite simple, really. It was? Yes. I induced young Thompson to talk you into listing your house for sale by giving him a listing on mine. When he came back with your listing, I gave him a cashier's check immediately. Uh, is that how you did it? Yes, indeed. Your experience to the contrary, Gildersleeve, it requires brains to get along in this world. Well, by George Bullard, I've got to hand it to you. You're clever. Quite true. 
And as I have so often said, Gildersleeve, the day would come when I would have the last laugh. This is the day. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, Bronco. Oh, there you are, Mr. Bullard. I've been looking all over for you. Well, what an ambitious young man. What is it, my boy? I've just sold your house. <laughs> well, that's fine. That... What? <laughs> my house? Well, Bullard, aren't you lucky? Oh, no, not my house. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you signed the listing, Mr. Bullard, and I have a cashier's check for the deposit. No, no, I... Yes, sir, here it is. The cashier's check you gave me for Mr. Gildersleeve. He's using it as a deposit to buy your house. <laughs> My own check? Gildersleeve! I got it trapped. As you said, Bullard, this is the day for the last laugh. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Now, if you're planning a party luncheon, here's a beauty of an idea for you. Get some big red tomatoes, the kind you're just beginning to see in the market, cut them in quarters, and arrange them petal fashion on a bed of lettuce. Then, right in the center, put a generous mound of chicken salad. But not just any chicken salad. I mean your own extra delicious kind. The kind you make with Miracle Whip salad dressing. Miracle Whip's lively, teasing flavor is just the thing to add a delightfully distinctive goodness to that salad. Try it and see if you and your best guests don't agree with the millions who prefer Miracle Whip. <laughs> Now, just a minute, Gildersleeve. We've got them where we want them, Bronco. Well, yeah, but Mr. Gildersleeve... What's going on here? What's all the racket, Uncle? Nothing at all, children. We just bought Mr. Bullard's house. No, you haven't. We'll call out both deals. Forget the whole thing. But what about my commission? I sold two houses. Yeah, well, Bullard, if you want to keep your house, you pay commissions on both houses. Both houses? I'll only pay commission on one. It's a deal. <laughs> you pay Bronco the commission on yours, and I'll pay him the commission on mine. He can take mine out in bacon and eggs. Yeah. <laughs> Bronco sold a house. He sold two houses, Bertie. Ain't that grand? Mr. Gillsleeve, you know what Mr. Bronco is? Yes, Bertie. He's a natural bond salesman. <laughs> <laughs> Bertie, show Mr. Bullard the back door. Leroy, put the tire back on the fire. <laughs> <laughs> Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. The show is written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Gloria Holliday, Vic Crenna, Gail Gordon, Earl Ross, and Vic Legrand. What about me? This is Jay Stewart saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. suits your taste? Mustard that's mild, delicately spiced, or sharp, snappy mustard with zing in every bite? Either way, you like Kraft prepared mustard, for there are two kinds. Salad mustard, tangy but smooth, and Kraft prepared mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand for different tastes, different uses. Either works magic in bringing out hidden flavor, for when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft Prepared Mustard. Now join the excitement of Break the Bank on 